Yada, 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 at least my uncles are still alive. I said, huh? You need to leave. You, you what? Uh, at, le at least what? YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Christian and welcome to or back to my channel. And for today's video, I got a little we story time for y'all. If y'all didn't catch my drift right there, yes, I have a little fighting story time for y'all. And what better way to give y'all a fighting story time than by playing a fighting game? So we're gonna be playing some Marvel's Avengers, bitch. All right. Uh, first things first, speaking of Marvel's Avengers, if y'all haven't already, go ahead and follow the Twitch, bro, where I literally go live every Thursday through Sunday, bro. I've been playing a ton of Marvel's content on there. I'm trying to steer clear from it this weekend, bro. But I just can't help it, bro. These games have been making me feel nostalgic. So if y'all really want to go check out the streams, want to see me in all my live glory, go ahead and hit up the uh, Twitch, bro. We're just 10 followers away from that affiliate, bro, and just a couple viewers, bro. So come on. Come on through. You know, the videos will be here too, okay, but come on through to the Twitch, bro, and I hope to see y'all soon, man. Um, other than that, go ahead and check out the last video if you haven't already. I'll make sure to add as an end card. Um, the freaking, damn, I can't even remember what, oh yeah, the Elden Ring story time where I begged for a role, apparently. Apparently, bitch, apparently. So yeah, go ahead and check that video out and Control Episode 9. I'll make sure to uh, link both so that we guys can go ahead and check them out. We're going to get back on Control pretty soon as well. Um, with all of that being said, bro, I'm ready to just get up into it and ready to get it popping. All right, so go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share the video, video with y'all friends. Oh my god! And let's get into this Marvel's Avengers video. Come on through, y'all. Let's get it popping. Um, so first things first here. I think I'm gonna just do a little. Uh, I'm open my nose. My fault, y'all. First things first. I think I'm gonna do a vault mission because I think it'll be the perfect amount of time for me to tell y'all the story as well as not make the video too long. So, for this particular story, it takes place back when I was a wee, wee, wee little lad. Okay, I wasn't that really, you know, I wasn't a wee little lad. I was pretty, pretty much this same height, all right, like six, six, four, six, five. Pretty much this same height, but in middle school. But this takes place back in middle school, all right, way back in the early years, the yonder years, bitch, all right. The yonder years is what I call them. We're just going to go as Black Panther just because that's who I play as, period. Um... <laughs> Let me let him talk. Aim appears to be in the area, likely seeking the same thing. Find the vault and recover its resources before our enemies have a chance. Thank you. Anyways, child, this takes place back in middle school, uh, way back in the yonder years, all right? Uh, I want to say this took place, what, mm, maybe fifth or sixth grade? No, no, yeah, definitely sixth, definitely sixth grade, because I didn't come into this school until, yeah, until sixth grade. Y'all see me. That's actually gonna be a fire thumbnail. Anyways, um, so yeah, I came into the school around sixth grade, uh, so that's where this story takes place. And let's just say at my middle school, well, first off, first things first, a little bit of background about my middle school that I went to. My middle school was a private school, and also was the second one in um, standing, if that makes any sense. So we were like the second, it was one of those charter schools, so we were like the second charter school, basically, because um, there was a first one. Long ass story, I'm not gonna get into it on here. Uh, but anyways, um, at this charter school, obviously with with charter schools come a lot of donations and you know money and things like that. And Ooh. 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 bitch, and because of that. Uh, you know, there's obviously people Ooh. whose parents are able to help donate a lot more to the school and whose people and people whose parents are not. This particular Girl, kid, uh, let's see, what should I call him? We'll call him, we'll call him Red Harry. Well, then it's gotta be Red Harry. Yeah, that's it. Uh, shout out to my, my, uh, what, my, uh, pup named Scooby-Doo fans. We'll call him Red Harry. All right. Um, Red Harry and his parents. Um, basically, like, own the school, I would say. I wouldn't say own the school in the sense that, like, the school is in their name, but own the school in the sense of, like, his mama basically had a lot of money, and his mama was donating hella money to the school. So, of course, with that, and with those kind of people, obviously there's egos and things involved. So Red Herring thought he, you know, he, he was, basically Red Herring thought he was the little shit, because his parents donated hella money to the school. Understandable, I get it, you know what I'm saying? You basically funding 
half the shit that we can do here, but that don't make you better than nobody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what, just because our parents can't donate as much as yo mama can or may be able to don't mean that we not, you know, just as important or anything like that. Anyways, child. So he basically thought he was the shit or whatnot, and so he would, you know, basically do a lot of fuckery. He was a little menace. Let's just say that. He was a menace, okay? Y'all thought the baby was a menace? Nah, bitch. This, this little motherfucker right here, which I'm pretty sure now he's probably so much toned down now, and like, you know, he's probably way more mature now. But back then, um, he was he was a menace, bro. And Red Herring, if you know who you are, if you figure out who you are from this video, bro, uh, hopefully you're doing well, my guy. Uh, but yeah, man, you were a little menace back in middle school, bro. No cap. No cap. But anyways, y'all, um, he was a little menace, and by a little menace, I mean he would talk reckless. Like, he would be talking reckless out of his mouth sometimes. We and so, you know, I'm all good. I'm all one for a good joke here and there. Sometimes I can get a little sensitive with roasting, but all in all, I know it's just been good fun at the end of the day. I know if I take it really seriously, that's just me being sensitive and, you know, whatnot. Certain shit, though, in roast battles, you just can't say. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, certain things that are just off limits, you know? I get it, like, you know, in street fights and street things like that, it's not really like a rule to anything like that. But, at the same time, it's just, you know, there's, there, there's no need to be disrespectful to one another, you know what I'm saying? It's just some friendly little roast ban banter. It's, it's never meant to be serious. So, we're basically going back and forth. I didn't mean to do that. We're basically going back and forth, um, you know, doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 um, we, uh, we going back and forth. You know what I'm saying? I'm cracking a few jokes here and there. He's cracking a few jokes here and there. Um, you know, everything is going smooth. Um, things started getting a little bit heated because he started saying some kind of foul shit. And I can't remember what exactly, because this, mind you, this happened way back in sixth grade. So I can't remember what exactly he said to me that, like, you know, like, kind of set me off. But also, at the same time, keep in mind, me and this kid also had a, I had a little bit of, like, a rivalry kind of thing. There's so many other story times of where me and this kid have fought. I could probably tell y'all, um, you know, I'll tell y'all some different ones, but I'll tell y'all this story, particular one for right now. And um, that obviously had played a part into, you know, me feeling a little some type of way when they were getting, um, you know, a little out of pocket with their jokes. So, uh, in my classroom in middle school, we had to do these like little collage thingies or whatever, we, where we made collages. And, um, you know, we put like our favorite things and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Our favorite artists, favorite show, whatever. And our teacher hung them up. So, uh, we, were doing a, we were doing a little roast battle and I, you know, we're looking around the room like saying like, oh, you know, stupid dumbass middle school banter that we thought was, you know, funny as fuck, but like nowadays it's just hella childish, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we're looking around the room trying to figure out, you know, what we, you know, what I guess we can make fun of each other with and about and whatnot, yada, yada, yada. Um, I, like I said, I can't remember exactly what was said between us because, like I said, it happened way back in sixth grade. And there's also way more situations that have happened in my life after that, that, you know, more traumatic experiences have happened after that. That way I can't really explain to y'all detail, detail in detail. I'm also a photographic memory person, so like, if it's not ingrained in my brain with my eyesight, then I can't really just remember shit off the top of my head. Anyways, unless it's like a script or something like that. Anyways, besides the point, back to the fucking story, bro. Back to the damn story. So basically, we're going back and forth and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? I'm cracking jokes, he cracking jokes, everything's all in good fun. We're looking out in the room though, and I remember, you know, we, we also were, we were boys and we were cool. Um, you know, a little bit when we first met. So I, you know, had opened up to him about the fact that I had lost both my uncles. Both my uncles, with which now I have two new uncles, you know, because I have four aunts, so four, you know, all of my aunts are, you know, married and whatnot. Um, you know, my new aunts are married and whatnot. So, um, you know, I, it's chill now, but back then, you know, both my uncles had passed away. One of them passed away from a stroke, and the other one passed away from cancer. And so, um, I, now that I think about it, I can't remember if I actually told him this or if he just like, I don't know, somehow overheard me talking about it with somebody else or whatnot, but he, um, he had the nerve to bring them up. 
Basically, yeah. As soon as he brought them up, that's essentially what we did, bro. We got into fight mode, bro. Right? Cause I was sitting here like, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, every only thing I can remember from the situation is exactly what he said. And I remember him saying something about, he said some fucked up shit where he was like, oh, well, yada, 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 at least my uncles are still alive. I said, huh? You, you what? At, at least what? Oh, hell no. Bitch, I should. Dead ass, bro. Dead ass, bro. That dead ass how it was. I said, I said, you wish what? I said, you, I said, you think what? At least what? Like that shit really had me tight. That shit got me so hot, my nigga. So hot, like. Yo, I do not play. I was sitting here like, bro, oh hell to the motherfucking nub. Ain't no way this kid just said what I think he just said, bro. And I don't know, that honestly triggered my fight or flight response. Cause when I tell you, I took the fuck off. I took the fuck, bro. I took the fuck off, bro. And I just, I immediately just started attacking that motherfucker. We were throwing punches back and forth. The teacher saw, we kicked this out or whatever. And um, it was beef ever since, bro. It was, it was beef ever since then. And um, I didn't mean to do that. And I guess I'll tell y'all a little second part since that story time is actually a little bit short. Um, and there's it's another friend that me and this kid also got into. We also had the same mutual best friend. My voice cracked. Y'all heard that? We also had the same mutual best friend, um, which, you know, also is a little bit, you know, Awkward as you can tell because the mutual best friend is just trying to keep us both, you know, in line so that we're not attacking each other. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, you know, it's difficult when that motherfucker be talking at the side of his neck. You know what I'm saying? This particular instance, though, with me and this person had more to do with something he did physically versus than what he said. Now, the first fight, obviously, the one I just explained was more so in the context of he talks about my uncles and I just had to take flight on him, you know what I'm saying? And because I can't remember what exactly, the story's kind of short, like what exactly was said back and forth between us, the story's kind of short. But this particular fight, we were in art class, bro. And this particular fight, I remember exactly because this particular fight actually almost got me like expelled from school. We were sitting in art class and I had got, we had both gotten to the sea at the same time. I'm clearly dead. We I'm clearly bigger than he is, right? He's, you know, my, he's like this scrawny little kid. I was, I was literally like 200, 300 pounds in middle school, right? So mind y'all. So mind y'all, I'm already like halfway onto the seat, right? And I guess he clearly wants to sit there. So uh, I get up to go get my little art supplies and whatnot, my little pens and markers and all that shit so I can start drawing what I wanted to draw. I come back to the chair to go sit back down and tell me why this motherfucker had the nerve to try to pull the chair from under me. I'm like, oh, you got me fucked up, bruh. Like, get the fuck out. Like, you trying to make me be, one, one thing I, listen, although I want to be an actor and although I want to be on TV and I want everybody to see me and things like that, one thing I don't like being is the joke or the laughing stock of somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That's just one thing I don't fuck with. You know what I'm saying? I want attention on me, but only if it's attention that I want. You know what I'm saying? I don't like unwarranted attention, and getting the chair pulled from under me would have given me that unwarranted, unwarranted attention, bro. So I, out of quick reflex, I just turn around, and mind you, back in middle school, I used to do karate. Like, it used to be part of like, these things that we called uh, Fantastic Fridays, or Fridays we did all of our electives. Anybody that goes to school in the US might have had a day like that in middle school. Or maybe in, if you went uh, to middle school in California, you might have had a day like that. But essentially, it was just a Friday where we had all of our elective classes and whatnot, like art, PE, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so we had PE and we also had karate. Uh, it was like a self defense type course. So uh, we had our little karate belts with us. And I don't know, to this day, like, I mean, I don't know. He should not pull the chair from enemy, but also at the same time, I guess I didn't have to thwack him across his damn shit. But that's exactly what the fuck I did. As soon as I peeped 
or felt the chair like leave from underneath my legs, I already knew that he was trying to pull that dumbass shit of pulling the chair from underneath me. And so I immediately turned around with my little karate belt and I said, <laughs> right on the side of his neck, right on the side of his neck meat right here. Ah! Why are you on it? When I tell you, he made a huge hissy fit about it, went up to the teacher, all that kind of shit. I'm talking, the teacher was talking about some. This is so big, I, I'm just so scared, like, I, I, I don't know what to do. First of all, girl, I'm in middle school, bitch. The, if you told me you was gonna tell my parents, I'm immediately gonna stop doing whatever the fuck I'm doing, that's bad, bitch. Cause one thing I'm not gonna get is my ass beat by my parents. You got me fucked up, okay? Hell no. Sometimes I understand it though, because clearly as a teacher, it's like, what can I do if a student is like, you know, extremely violent and it's like bigger than me. But at the same time, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, at the same time, it's one of those things where it's like, bruh, you didn't see the full context of the situation. You just saw what you saw. And I understand you have to report what you saw, but I have a side too. And that's where a lot of the situations like, you know, that I was in and a lot of situations that I'm in in general come from. A lot of people, it's like how I react to things versus like what people do to me for some reason. And I always find that interesting because I'm like, no, nah, bro. People provoke situations just as much as people react to them, right? So in my defense, I was only reacting to the fact that I was about to get a chair pulled from underneath me and I could hit my head on the back of the computers and shit. So it's not my fault that I just happened to have a quicker reflex and I was like, bruh. It's not my fault that I just had a better, you know, a better reflex in him. And I'm like, bruh, you're not gonna just sit here and do that to me. So yeah, I smacked him across the side of his neck meat. And he, he had a huge red welt on the side of his shit the next day, bro. But that's only like two of like the multiple fights me and this kid have been in. Like I said, me and this kid were like Naruto and Sasuke damn near. Friends one minute, and then the next minute we start boxing, bro. Um, and like I said, now that I think about it, bro, I really hope dude is cool. I really hope he's chilling, bro. Um, Red Herring, if you see this, dog, um, it's all love, bro. It's all love, bro. Um, but you were a little menace back in middle school, bro. You was a little menace, bro. Um, that's it, bro. That's it for the story time. That's like the sixth time my voice has been cracked in this damn video. So let me get the fuck up off here, bro. Perfect timing, too, because we finished the vault. So, I thank you guys for watching this video, bro. I'm gonna come out with some more story times. If y'all wanna hear some more story times and some more fighting story times with me and this kid, let me know in the comment section, bro. I got plenty more, bro. Me and this kid fought at least four or five times, bro. And I do have a couple more fighting story times. I used to be a little boxer in middle school. I won't front, I won't front. I used to be a little boxer in middle school. I call him a menace, but I used to be a boxer, bitch. I was beating bitches up. Knocking bitches out their shoes. These is facts. <laughs> I'm already spinning, bro. Let me get up off here, bro. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna see y'all in the next video. And uh, yeah, bro. Peace. This other nigga told me he would put me in my place. I told him, roll my fucking weed and get the fuck up on my face. This other nigga steady watching all up on my page. But his nigga steady dogging and a hoe in last place.